Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, worship team. Yeah. For always preparing the heart for the Word of God. Uh, no matter what day you are joining us today in the room, online, tomorrow, next week, or next month, this is home. Yes. And it's our prayer that you would experience Jesus in a personal and powerful way. If you know Him, it's our prayer that you would experience Him greater today. He would move you in a powerful way. If you are here or watching online and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, it's our prayer that you would have a defining moment and you would experience God's amazing grace, His love and forgiveness. That's our prayer. Now, before we dive into week three of our series called Relationship Goals, I need to share some bad news, and I hope this doesn't stir up some child trauma, but everything you were told as a kid is not true. There's a possibility your parents, not your grandparents, okay, your grandparents are gold, there's a possibility your parents lied to you. If you were told the ice cream truck only plays the music when they're out of ice cream. <laughs> it's not true. If you were told if you swallow gum, it will stay in your stomach for seven years. <laughs> it's not true. Don't go looking for it. That's disgusting. It's not true. <laughs> if you were told you have to wait 30 minutes to swim after eating lunch or Dinner! It's not true! Mom and Dad needed a break. They needed a breather. If you were told if you swallow a watermelon seed, a watermelon will grow inside your stomach. It's not true. If you were told, and, and my dad said this all the time, if you were told sitting too close to the TV will ruin your eyes. Back up, boy, you're going to be blind in a week. I can hear him. It's not true. If it was true, we'd all be blind. <laughs> Last one, and it's the title for this week's message. Drum roll, please, for all of you talented, gifted people. Some of you are like, I can't do that. Me neither. If you were told, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. It's not true. Sticks and stones can break our bones. And words either build up or tear us down. I'm not interested in giving you a polished message. In fact, I can. I'm not that gifted. But if I was, I still wouldn't do it. The purpose of this platform that God has given to me is to point you to the power of His Word and pray that it transforms your life. The, the words recorded in this book are alive. This is... God breathe. This is absolute truth. This is our GPS. This is our guide. Our standard for how we live our lives as Christians. Warning. Warning if someone gives you a word of knowledge, a, a prophetic word, a dream or vision without the validation of Scripture, it's shenanigans. It's counterfeit. It's a fraud. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit would move in a powerful way. Father, we need His guidance and we need You desperately. Renew our minds and reveal what's keeping us from Your abundant life. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus said, in John 10, 10, I have come that you may have life, that's salvation, and have it more abundantly. I believe a lot of Christians miss out on the abundant life because of the words they speak over themselves or words they speak over other people. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. In other words, the problem is more than what we put in our mouth. That's another day, another sermon. 
but it's also what comes out of our mouth. The Bible reveals that God places a great importance on the way we use our words. In fact, I did some investigating, I did some word searching, and God uses the word tongue, talk, speak, words, mouth, and silence over 3,500 times. That's a lot. Ephesians 4.29 tells us, Do not let any, everyone say any, any unwholesome talk come out of your, what, mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to whose needs? Their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Gossip is the topic of our conversation. I'm pressing in. Gossip destroys and damages relationships. It, it destroys businesses, churches, friends, families, small groups, marriages. The list goes on and on. Gossip is networking the lies of the devil. And social media is one of his platwar- platforms where the, his trolls sit behind keyboards and throw shade. Who rant about everyone and everything. And if that's you and you are a Christian, stop it. Repent. You are blowing your testimony and you are giving the church, the big C, a black eye. (laughs) Bible says in James chapter 3, starting in verse 3, we can make a large horse. Any horse fans in the house? Yeah, okay, giddy up. My favorite horse is at Walmart. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by the means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. Watch this. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire, and the tongue is a flame of fire. Get that visual. It's a whole world of wickedness. Corrupting your entire body. In, two, in November of 2016, a, a horrific fire broke out in the Great Smoky Mountains, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg. We lived there for five and a half years. Beautiful country. This fire destroyed over 2,400 homes, buildings, businesses. Over 17,000 acres burned to the ground. It caused over two billion dollars in damages and 15 people I'm sorry 14 people died lost their lives and it all started because of the negligence of two teenage boys playing with matches the Bible says our words have the power to ignite A fire. Our words have the power to ignite a wildfire of destruction and devastation. One word of wickedness from our tongue can become a blazing fire that destroys everything and everyone around us. The Bible says our words have the power to spread poison and corrupt the entire body. Things that make you go, hmm. Gossip is rampant in the church. It's rampant among God's people. And it's time for God's people to shut their pie hole. When a Christian gossip, it spreads poison to the person who is gossiping, to the one who is listening, to the one who is being gossiped about, and to those who don't know Christ. And to those who don't know Christ, we are pushing them further and further and further away from God. God help us. Proverbs 16, 28 says, A a perverse person stirs up conflict, and gossip separates who? Close friends. Close friends. Gossip stirs up division and separates close friends. Hashtag relationship goals. 
No. The word perverse literally means someone who deviates from the truth to cause damage. Newsflash, God gave us a tongue to speak life, to build up, to worship, to praise, to bring unity to the body instead of division. Our tongue is a sword. It can be used as a weapon of mass destruction or an instrument that brings healing. Proverbs 20, 19. I'm just reading the Bible today. If you're getting stirred up, it's not because of Pastor Darrell. The Bible says a gossip betrays a confidence. So avoid a man, a person who talks too much. Wait, hold the phone. What in the world? Gossip isn't just lying about someone to embarrass, hurt, or damage their reputation. No, no, no. The Bible says gossip also involves true information shared in private, made public. Gossip betrays confidence. It destroys trust. And it goes deeper than posting something on social media. Sometimes it's disguised as a prayer request. Please be in prayer for the Jones family. I heard their son or daughter caused some problems at the school the other day. We, we need to pray for them. Stop it. You need to pray for the Johnson's marriage. I heard from Billy, who heard from Bob, who heard from Brad. I don't know where Brad heard it. But, bleh. there's only one reliable source when it comes to the truth every single time. Imagine for a moment not repeating anything that wasn't from the direct source. Ooh. How many conversations would you not have? I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe Thumper's mom had it right. Any Bambi fans in the house? Man, I love that movie growing up with the girls. What you say if you can't say something nice? Proverbs 10, 19. Still just reading the Bible. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. The King James Version says the wise man shuts his mouth. Pastor D, 2022 translation, shut up and stop spreading toxic lies and division. Stop it. Proverbs 17, 28. Some of you are like, I, I picked the wrong Sunday to come to church. 17, 28, even fools, watch this are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouth shut, they seem intelligent. <laughs> I love this text because apparently gossipers can raise their IQ if you talk less and listen more. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, that's why James 1.19 says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, he's talking to people inside the church. He's talking to Christians, you must all, not some, not most, you must all be what? Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Let's say it again. You must all be what? Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. The Hebrew word for gossiper literally means informant. Some people like to be in the know, even if the know are lies. It also means storyteller. This person has the information. They have the 411. They leaned in and listened to all of the gossip, gossip. So now they have to tell someone what they know or heard, or they will explode. And if they explode, we all know what's coming out. It doesn't smell good. Use your imagination. The word gossiper literally means informant, storyteller, and lastly, it also means backroom whisperer. And this usually involves slander. For example, sharing a struggle someone shared with you in private. 
Many years ago, a well-known pastor and author built a massive home and it hit the news, not just the local news, but national news. And I remember having a conversation with another pastor at lunch. And I asked him, did you see the house so-and-so built? Did you see it? Can I ask you a question? Why did I ask that question? Because I cared about his finances? Because I cared about his testimony? No, it was because my humanity was jealous and insecure. So I created questions about his character. How pathetic. I love this pastor. I've been to his church. I've learned from his teaching, his preaching, from his books. So I called my pastor friend and I repented. I said, bro, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything about pastor so-and-so. You see, here's the truth about a backroom whisperer. They don't want to be identified as the source of sharing inside information because it might damage their testimony. Ha, 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 ha. What? And I get it. Sometimes people share information with good intentions. But what's shared in private should never be spoken or posted in public unless given permission or if it's unlawful or someone is being hurt. Let's just keep reading the Bible. Proverbs 18.8. Rumors are dainty morsels. Watch this. Dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. This might be a hard pill for some of you to swallow, but our words always reveal our heart. Always. In Luke 6, 45, Jesus said, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say, what you post, flows from what is in your, what? Heart. Many, 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 many years ago in college, a college computer class, I learned a principle called GIGO. Anybody know what that is? All the old people, right? Garbage in. I think, I believe the same applies with our heart and our mouths. What we put in our mind and heart will find its way out of our mouth and into the ears of other people. And who knows what collateral damage will happen. And I know, I know, I know some people say we need to learn how to control our tongues. We need to know what to say, when to say it, or say nothing at all. And I get the idea behind that thinking, but that's not addressing the deeper problem. That's not addressing sin. Can we bite our tongue with willpower and not say something sometimes? Yes, absolutely, 100%. But sooner or later, what's inside of us will come out of us. What's in the well will come up in the bucket. The truth is, our words are never accidental. Careless sometimes. Yep. No filter sometimes. Yep. But our words are first formed in our mind and filtered through our hearts and then vomited from our lips with permission. Our heart shapes our words. The real problem is not our tongue, it's our heart. And God is the only one who can change our heart. And heart change starts with repentance. And so if you're here today and you don't know Christ, your, your step into a relationship with Him is repentance. Your sin has already been forgiven. Jesus paid for it on the cross. You just have to accept it. Let's keep reading. Proverbs, Proverbs 4.23. The Bible says, Above all else, guard your what? For some things, for everything you do, flows from it. Psalms 19.14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our prayer would be, God, may the words of my mouth be controlled by the Holy Spirit of God that lives inside of me. In Matthew 12, starting in verse 33, Jesus drops the gauntlet on some religious people. Look at what he says, starting in verse 33. A tree is identified by its 
fruit. Hmm. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be... Then he says this, you brood of snakes. Your translation may say vipers. Either way, ouch, right? How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say or post. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And then he said, and I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. Those are some hard words to swallow. In John 5, Jesus makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Go home and read it. He said, you diligently study the Scripture, but you do not have the love of God in you. You study the Scripture. You get up and you read it, but the love of God's not in you. Proverbs 16, 2. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. It's not what we just say. It's also why and how we say it. Because Scripture declares we can be flat-out self-deceived by our own what? Motives. In other words, justifying, explaining, and offering excuses what we said was said in love. It could be but you can't fool God. He knows our true motives. And that should keep all of us humble and very careful with our words. One day all of us will have to answer for every careless word we've spoken. It's possible, according to Scripture, to be devoted to God's Word without knowing Him, without having one ounce of His love inside of you. PSA public service announcement. We cannot stop gossiping without the power of the Holy Spirit controlling our hearts. And when God controls our heart, He controls our lives, our lips, and our post. So if you've been or become the subject of gossip, I want to give you some inside tip from God's Word and what I've, I've learned and I am still learning. Now I know this might shock some of you, but I've been the topic of gossip. Some of you are like, no, that doesn't surprise me at all, preacher. <laughs> I've been the topic of a slanderous conversation. I've been posted about on social media, talked about in small groups. I've been the topic of conversation over breakfast tables, lunch tables, dinner, hopefully uh, dessert. I, I love dessert. <laughs> I've been told, text, emailed, and privately messaged I'm not qualified. I'm a heretic, I'm a false teacher. I'm a liar, I'm a lunatic, I'm a loser. I've been the target of gossip by people I love, people I thought that were my friends. I've had segments and sound bites from messages used against me. And I have a picture of every single one of those people on the screen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> the truth is, there will always be someone who wants to hurt you who wants to put you down, gossip about you, belittle your accomplishments, your successes, judge your failures, which <laughs> blows my mind because I mean, the last time I checked, we've all failed. Right? Everybody. All of us. Sooner or later, all of us encounter gossip. And here's a few things I've learned and I am still learning. Write these down. It will help you. You ready? Real fast. I got five minutes. Complain to God. You have to complain. You have to get it out. Complain to God. David provides the best model for our response in the book of Psalms. David was attacked from all sides. David was slandered, and he penned some really good words and prayers complaining to God. Write down Psalms 35, 37, 41, 55, 59, 69, and 140. I've got them memorized. These chapters will help you understand 
how to complain to God. It will help shape your prayer life. Next one, don't strike back. Don't strike back. And I know, and I used to think the same way, and sometimes I still do. Like, I'm an Old Testament Christian. Right? An eye for an eye. Don't sink to their level. Don't gossip about the gossipers. And I know the pain it can cause and the collateral damage it has on people who get caught in the middle. It's heartbreaking. But I've learned when you are PO'd, right, blanked off, talk to God. Chances are, if you are talking to God, you won't say something you painfully regret. When I encounter the brokenness of people, I hold on to two timeless texts of forgiveness. I hold on to the words of Jesus when he is being crucified on the cross for my sin, for your sin, for all of humanity's sin. And Jesus said, forgive them. Forgive them. And I hold on to Joseph forgiving his brothers who sold him into slavery. In Genesis 50, Joseph penned these words, what you meant for harm, God intended for good to accomplish his mission. God took what was intended for evil and used it to shape Joseph's character for his glory to be done. Go read Psalms, I think it's 105, 17 or 18. There was a purpose for the pit. There was a purpose for Potiphar's house. There was a purpose for jail. God was shaping his character to be used by him. If anyone had the right to retaliate, it was Jesus and Joseph. So just because you have a reason to retaliate doesn't mean you are justified retaliating. In 2018, all hell broke loose. That's all I'm going to say. And God God said to me, Daryl, remain silent. I will fight your battles for you. And he did. Complain to God. Don't strike back. Take the high road. If the stories are false, make sure they don't become true. If part of it's true or all of it's true, own it. Repent. And don't live in the past to learn from it. Don't give them the satisfaction of a reply. I promise you it's not worth it. Complain to God. Don't strike back. Take the high road. And lastly, Love your enemies. And I get it. Maybe the gossip was malicious, slanderous, destructive, divisive, but love and forgiveness is a must. And yes, you can love from a distance. And no, you don't have to ever trust them again. But as Christians, we are called to love God, love people, and forgive. I pray these scriptures will help you. Proverbs 15, 4, as we close. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Proverbs 10, 12, love overlooks the wrongs that others do. Matthew 5, 43 and 44, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Colossians 3.13, you must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must, you must, you must forgive others. 1 Peter 3.9, do not repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with what? A blessing. A blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will bless you for it. We live in a broken world with broken people. So guess what? Some people can't wait to get home, light a candle, pour a glass of wine, and gossip. For some of you, your struggle is judgment. You love judging others. If that's you, here's the 411. You are are not omniscient. You don't have all the info. You are not objective. Your self-righteousness is hypocritical and a deflection of your own sin. Stop playing God because you are not good at it. And the position is already taken. Every single one of us have a choice when someone says to us, did you hear about or what so-and-so did? We can lean in and we can listen, 
We can be part of the problem, the sin called gossip, or we can say, I'd rather not talk about someone if they're not in the room, if they're not here to defend themselves. There is no upside to gossip. It's destructive. It divides, it damages, and destroys everything it touches. Gossip violates God's word, and it cannot be resisted when the gospel and the Holy Spirit of God doesn't rule our lives. So as we close, I, I'm not going to double-dog dare you to uh, make a pinky promise to try harder or do better. Willpower is not enough. My prayer is, is that you are convicted by the Holy Spirit of God and that you would repent and God would empower you to move forward. So I want everyone to bow your heads as a good friend of one of our deacons, Larry, comes forward and closes us in prayer.